What's up, Gold? Um, yeah, I'm basically just making this video real quick to sort of like just run through a lot of the things that are here in Brave Frontier. Because I haven't gotten around to do that. We're gonna go ahead and just go over different menu options. Social, obviously, pretty self explanatory for the most part. Um, so the thing about the gifts, so like what you can do is like you can hit each of these spots and like choose the thing you want and also it shows you like how much like for the honor thing it shows you like how much of them you have um people only really use these when they're trying to craft a certain type of spear um so yeah like for the most part people usually just pick honor points because of the blast like, a little honor summon special thing um but yeah let me go ahead and okay so i have sent gifts you always just choose preferred gift because that just makes it easier because people will unfriend you if you send them the wrong gift <laughs> like that's always been a thing for like the entirety of like brave frontiers lifespan people will unfriend you if you send them the wrong gift um but yeah like this thing right here is why people usually pick um honor points um but yeah something self-explanatory shop is self-explanatory um, now, the limited time bundles thing, that's this bundle chest up here, um, increase fan capacity, increase, this is all like stuff you do with gems, purchase stamps, now stamps are for use in, um, raid battles, speaking of which I'm about to buy this myself, cause I just like having these, it's, they're silly, um, and then town, now, this is basically the sound test. You use your gold in order to buy songs. I have bought all of them. Oh no, I have not. Let me fix that. There we go. <laughs> this is basically sound test. It's it's all right. I'm kind of, it's kind of disappointing in some aspect because like if I press play, it only plays in here. So if I like leave out of here, it doesn't like play anymore. It's it's kind of sad it's not like with smash bros where you play it there and then it like becomes like the menu theme while you're doing other stuff um but yeah upgrade this is to upgrade your resources you use karma for this this is another reason why you should be farming the monday dungeon so you can max these all out because as you max them out one you get more resources from like these each of these places each time you level them up um, you get access to more things you can craft and synthesis and spears. Um, but yeah, that's basically why you want to upgrade stuff as much as possible. Also, make sure you are collecting your, um, collecting from the, bleh. make sure you do your tapping. Yes, do your tapping. <laughs> um, units. Now, um, few units. Obviously, this is just a way for you to look at your units. Um, if you've recently summoned, make sure you go to your units. Make sure you add favorites so you don't accidentally sell your favorite units. Make sure you do that or you don't accidentally fuse them or whatever. You can filter the units based on like, you know, a bunch of different things. You can filter them. So like if you wanted to only see fire units, you know, leave it like that mess around with it if you are trying to like build a team or whatever the same things can be done in you know all the different modes um oh spears i forget. i need to go over spears so spears are basically like um weapons that you equip they give stat boosts extra effects they're basically just they make your unit better and so, like, if you have a unit that doesn't have spears, you want to change that ASAP. Now, you can craft spears in the town. Bleh. You can craft spears in the town. Um, obviously, if you've leveled it up more, you'll have access to more spears. Um, sometimes there's event spears that come out, and those are always really good. Like, there's never been an event spear that was bad. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, wait, wait, I, I lied. There was an event spear that was bad, but that was, um, but that was the April Fool spears and it was specifically made to be bad. 
And then, like, um, there's also the crystallized tear, which you made from salt, <laughs> which was released this April Fool's. It, it was great. But yeah, you want to, like, be making sure you're making spears so that you can give your units a boost and all that jazz. Um, some of the spears are, like, really easy to craft, too. Um, spear frogs, if you fuse them. Actually, you know, I'm going to go over all the different fusions, things that you can fuse to your units. So, um, blah, 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 blah. I'm just gonna pick her. Cause I'm, actually, is she maxed out? She is, so I won't be able to show you with her. Um, you maxed out. You're not, okay. When I say maxed out, I mean like for stat boosts and stuff. But basically, Burst Frost and Burst Emperors increase your BB level. The Imps, they increase your stats by um set amount you know you have i already went over spear frog spear frogs increase your spear capacity they can only be used once um so guard imps increase defense um there's the recovery imps like there's a bunch of different imps and then there's the hp imps there's only a limited amount that you can equip to like you can fuse into each person these um artin imps i think they're called but they increase all your stats um and then you have the elgus these basically give an extra skill to a unit and it doesn't go away when you evolve it so like if you have a unit that you know you're going to be using don't be shy with um using your elgifs like me where i have like how many do i have hoarder right now 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 i have 50 elgifs my goodness and then you have um where are they these are the dark elgifs and basically what these do is let's say because the thing is you can only have one extra skill and if you you can't like fuse uh, like you, it's not like you can fuse a new Elgis to overwrite the old one. You have to use one of these to remove that skill and then equip a new skill. But the thing is, you don't lose the old Elgis. Basically, what this does, when you fuse it into a unit, you get that Elgif back. So yeah, there's that. Um. Anyway, we're going back to the home menu. Man, I need to play, play various things. Um, gonna go over the vortex, I guess. Um, it's not there anymore because the vortex arena is gone. <laughs> anyway, the Grand Gaia Chronicles, these are basically like story mode missions, similar to the Trials and Exvius. Um, if you should always be trying to complete these because they drop extremely powerful spears. Some of which, like, give the specific unit, like, extra boost or whatever. Um, Guardians of the Lord, these are, like, L gifts. I never bother with these, because the drop rates are horrible. Um, daily dungeons are obvious. These are basically where you use your keys. You can, um, do... You can do metal parades, jewel parades, and imp parades. Oop. Alright, let's keep it moving. I would go for quest, but <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> um, raid battles. So basically, the thing about raid battles, um, this is basically something extra for you to do when you don't have energy or whatever. I'm just gonna like you can you know search for your friends to see if they're playing a raid currently. So let's say um you want to play play a raid with me, you would um you know. I guess you could do quick start or whatever, and then I would press friend search and I would, you know, show me that you were in a room and I would join that room, or vice versa. Um, I mean, I've heard, like, you told me you've done a couple of those, so I probably don't need to go over that too much. The Imperial Capital. Now, this place is very important. Um, bless. So, this is actually the main reason why I wanted to um, make this video in the first place. So, you got Frontier Hunter. This is something that happens once a month, and basically it's score attack mode. You try to score as high as you possibly can. Um, actually, I'm, I'm curious because like I know it says I got um, 17,000 out of everyone. And keep in mind, this is between millions of players, so it's not bad. 
Let me see how I did in my friend ranking. Okay, so for context, that the first place, that's that 900, level 999 friend I had. <laughs> Let's keep looking, keep looking. Oh man, I think I'm like 17th. Ooh, 16th. It's lit. Alrighty. Let me see how many of my friends actually did something. I knew it. Fish didn't do it. Unless he did and I just didn't see him. Come on, step it up. There. Yeah, he didn't do it. You always want to at least like try to do it. Like, Because the thing is, even if you don't think you're rank high, you should still be doing it. Because of the simple fact that it's like you get ex like you get a lot of rewards for bleh, that's not what I meant to hit. It's like you get a lot of rewards for um participating in this. Um, let's go over. So for entrance, if you manage to clear and get a certain amount of points, you get burst frogs, you get two metal keys. You know, it's like you see, you get like you're getting a lot of stuff for it. Um, and then it's like for each one, you get like you get a lot of rewards. Like you get. Typically, like the main thing from doing this, you get a bunch of burst frogs, a bunch of gems. Like you get like around like 15 gems every Frontier Hunter season, assuming you get everything from every level. Now, based on um, what your current team is looking like, um, I mean, you might be able to make a stronger team before the next season. Um, I think it says August 16th. Well, I just don't, like, don't feel bad about not being able to get everything in here, because as you can see, I couldn't even get that one, because <laughs> it's, it's really high. Um, but on that note, because the thing about Frontier Hunter, the main thing you want to prioritize is your maximum damage output. You just want to do as much damage as you possibly can to boost your score as high as you possibly can. So, like, um, so what I usually do is I go into here, which is the, um, this is basically a training mode where you can mess around with different team formats to, um, bleh. Mess around with different team formats to try and strengthen your team layout as much as possible. Like, this is basically how you find out which team works best, which, um, which units you want to use, which order you have them attack in, etc etc i'm going to just do this this actually is not this is my frontier hunter team that i use for the most part the difference is that um bleh, is it not loading i really hope i really hope it loads Ugh. oh gosh it's doing the thing it's doing the thing there we go all right so basically um, as you can see, you can control pretty much anything you want in this. You can set like um, the enemy settings to how much HP they have, uh, their, um, you know, but as you can see, there's a lot of settings, so mess around with those to like test out different scenarios and whatnot. And like, I always go in here whenever I make a new team, but just to try and figure out the, um, and so my phone randomly like, it did a thing, and the recording stopped. So yeah, but anyway, um, you can do this to like test out various. Um, basically, I usually use it to test out like how much damage my team is doing and what, or e whether or not they can like, how long it would take them to kill a certain boss. Um, you know, HP wise, blah 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 blah. You do all this. And you get that. You can set it to have um, healing. You can set it to be to revive itself after a certain amount of time. Yes, there are bosses that do that. It's ridiculous. Um, you know how much how much battle crystals and heart crystals they drop. Um, whether they're immune to critical hits or blah blah blah. Whether they're immune to elemental damage. All that jazz. Go back. Um, general settings. So basically. Wait, no, that's not what I meant to do. No, this basically, um, basically what you can do is you can turn on how many enemies you want. Get out of here. Get out of here. There we go. Anyway, go back. Manage items. 
you have access to every item in the game, so you can just test out various strategies on how well it will work, all that jazz. I usually just give myself fusion tonic because I want to see like how well my brave burst and stuff work. Battle settings. Um, as you can see, you can just, you can also just set it so that your BB gauge is at infinite. But I usually don't do that because I want to test how well my you know attack layout fills up my BB gauge and all that jazz. Um, critical hits. Now this is what you want to do if you're like trying to see your team's absolute maximum damage. Um, overdrive, overdrive gaze again. That's I mean you can set it to infinite or not. I'm not actually gonna just set it to infinite just so I can just explain the overdrive gauge stuff. You can set like um, what percentage their health is at. So like let's say you wanted to test like how well your team healed or something, you know. <laughs> I don't use that very often if that wasn't obvious. Oh, and the best part is you can change the background music to whatever you want. <laughs> so that's a pretty neat feature. Um, blah, go back. Uh, unit info. Now this is a thing you can do to like, let's say you wanted to like move around like the units and stuff. You can do that. Um, now, um, what else is there? But yeah, I guess from there I'm gonna go into settings because I want to show you auto battle settings and how that works. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, auto battle settings. Um, so you can. They're self-explanatory. Just just read them. Now, advanced auto battle settings. This. Oh dear. Oh dear, it's doing the thing again. Okay, there we go. So this basically what you can do is you can change what they do and in what order they do it. So I have like this is my setup because I like do this because it gives me the maximum um spark amount with this team. And oh my gosh, I think I changed all the enemies to fire type. I did not mean to do that. I have to go back and change that. But yeah, like you change the order. Um this is the setting I personally recommend, but like your team may work differently. Change action. This, like, if you have it set to auto, they will just follow just default auto battle setting, but you can change it to something specifically because as you see, it's like guard, normal attack, brave burst, SVB, UBB, you know, and default auto battle. I have it set to default auto battle. Alrighty, now let's go back. Now, um, hmm, just for context, we are going to just, we're just going to use, now a thing about setting the order is that's really important is figuring out what buffs you want to be applied first. So like this guy at, like, okay, so this guy, Arthur adds Spark, oh gosh, what did, what did I do? Arthur adds Spark, Kira adds Critical, Quaid is like a, Attack, BB attack buff, and he adds all elements to your attack. Zero is also spark, but he's just like a stronger spark. Um, Avant, Avant is just like an attack buffer. And Charlotte is actually not supposed to be there, because she's there because I'm going to try that 100 floor thing again. But, um, but yeah. Wow. It is 60,000 damage. Uh, I, I just want to see something. How much damage can I do just normal attacking? That's a hundred thousand. Whoa, I got one million damage just doing normal attacks. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> anyway, we're just gonna see how much damage I can rack up. A lot. The answer is a lot. And keep in mind, this isn't even my optimal team. <sighs> <sighs> now basically like the goal isn't really to get like super super high damage well i mean it is but just focus on getting the highest amount of damage that you can with whatever your team layout is so like um now when it comes to mech your team layout you want to try and stack as many different buffs as you possibly can because if you have the same buffs it won't count but it won't count them both they'll just like override each other 
So if like you find that like two of your units have the same buffs, have like the one that has a stronger version of that buff go second. Um, but like okay. So for example, I'm going to just swap her, swap her out with the person that that is supposed to be. Why is everything loading so slow? I don't know. It's because it's raining. But anyway, um, oh, I just had to point this out because this is really funny. So I was doing the Omni Summon thing, and I got her, her, and her. <laughs> like, I got all versions of her, and I just, like, I just found that really funny. But anyway, where is Osme? She's my main, she's my, one of my Frontier Hunter units, and I always forget where she is. Probably because I never actually have to add her to my team. But anyway, but just like... Bleh. Stop. Stop being a scrub me. But anyway, I'm going to go over the like the various buffs that they cover. So like looking at him, he has, you know, he does a bunch of different elements. He boosts BB attack and he adds different elements to his attack. Um now with enhancements you can actually, you know, again self-explanatory. I have them set to add light and dark elements as well, so he adds all elements to my attack, so I always get elemental. Like, I'm basically always doing super effective damage. That's basically the goal of that. Again, he is a spark buffer, as you can see. It does it does a lot of hits. The uh, does spark critical, boost spark damage, inflicts spark vulnerability, and then, like, he has some other things as well. So there's him. Um... And then Avant. Avant is currently my leader because of his leader skill. Now, Avant um, is one of the best leaders for Frontier Hunter because, like, he just boosts your damage through the roof by an absurd margin. And, like, bleh. But anyway, um, next up, you got her. Now, the thing about her is she boosts damage against status afflicted foes, so that's just a, a, a way to increase damage without it being the same buffs. And like she also increase flick status helmets on people, so like you get to make use of that. Um, and then Kira, what he does is he increases the critical damage. So he boosts the critical hit rate and he boosts critical damage, so there's that. Then, uh, bleh. Let me go back to the Imperial Capital because I was talking about I was talking about the Hacker Summon Hall and like the training mode, the things you can use for that. But I'm going to go over this anyway. Um, mini game. Now these are just like fun little things for you to play. Um, you can get some rewards out of them if you get like high scores on them and stuff like that. And then you have the slot machine. Now when you complete a raid, you get brave medals and you can use the brave medals to like spin on the slot machine. You can get some, actually, like, some really good prizes from there. So, just, like, when you have have the medals, I recommend, like, trying to go for it. And then, obviously, I'm pretty sure you figured out keys already. Um, your missions. So, the thing about, like, obviously, these are basically your daily missions. You always want to come in here and accept them. <laughs> like, you always want to come in and, like, accept your daily missions so that, like... Because when you like complete these, you get merit points. Merit points can be used to be traded for goodies and all that jazz. Now, records, this is um, a bit different. It's basically the same thing as challenges, except these are like auto, I guess. Anytime you accomplish one of these, you come in here and you get your reward. Now, um, I think it was, was it missions or was it special? It was not, it was special. Okay, so special, these ones, you have to actually accept them before you do them in order to get the rewards. And you can only accept one at a time. <laughs> so yeah. As you can see, I have not done a lot of these. So I have to go ahead and do that. So yeah. I'm going back. Uh, trading. Self-explanatory, trade stuff for merit points. If you have extra stuff that you don't really need and you want to get rid of it, trade it for merit points. Alrighty, going back. 
Um, the Imperial Library. This is basically just like, it's a library. It's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The Gate of Memoirs. This is basically for you to watch cutscenes that you've already seen, and I'm going to like rapidly X out of that so I don't accidentally spoil the plot for you. <laughs> Now, the Summoner's Research Lab, this is how you do trials or all that jazz. Um, after you complete the trial, you can try it again for zero energy at no cost. And you don't get the rewards again, obviously, but it's just like if you wanted to play it again just to, like, you know, see how a team did against a certain boss, it has its merits to it. And also, some of the challenges have are things like beat trial number one in three turns. And then this is just another place for you to craft spears, and... I can craft a leg launch? <laughs> what? What? I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, I have to use it. Hmm. Anyway, um... The... This, this is where you craft stuff that is specifically for use in raid battles. Again, just read the effects. Um, have I covered everything? No, I have not. There's something else in here. Um, Frontier Day. Now, but getting loading so but so you see these you see these three orbs here at the top. Basically these are they're like your arena orbs, raid orbs, whatever. You use one to take on one of these challenges. Um so yeah, this is basically a way for you to have use for these when it's not Frontier Hunter time. Um But yeah, there's that. Now we're going to be going now if you I I recommend you try these as much as you can because um they drop some really 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 strong spears. Like some of the best spears in the game come for that. Um what have I not covered? What have I not covered? I have not gone over arena or guild. So the arena arena again self-explanatory um you can you know you have like specific arena squads like you have like 10 different specific arena squads i have not made them all because like i made this one then i never needed another one ever again <laughs> um you can add random rules basically what this does is like You'll get a random challenge added to the arena, and if you still win, you get more points. So like it can like it can literally be anything. Um, a rule of thumb when you are playing the arena is to always look at how much um, what their score is and try to go for somebody who is like significantly higher than yours. If you once you get to the point where you have like you're in the thousands, and as far as your score is concerned. Try to uh, try to always play people who are at least three thousand points above you, or like actually, because I'm not sure what rank you are, but I think like like between fifteen hundred points above you and three thousand points above you, because like again, maximize the points you get for winning, and minimize the points you get for losing. So yeah, I need to stop doing this. This is this is important. Anyway, let's hope I don't get bodied. Okay, this is looking like I'm going to be winning this. Now, um, just just letting you know now, because I have like the the arena leader that I have, his leader skill is actually that he increases the amount of arena points you get for winning. So he actually like makes it you level up faster. A rank up, I guess, faster. Um Yay, I won. Flawless victory. As you see, I got 300 points and then 101 points from the bonus points. I can't even remember what the little bonus rule thing was. Um, Challenge Arena doesn't happen all the time. Coliseum is like the arena, except it's like, I think it's like specific teams. I almost never do it. Because I only ever try to grind in the arena. Um, guild. This is something um, you should probably start doing more often. I mean, uh, I think it's Guild Hall. Blech. Okay, so this is basically how, like, you can see the other members of the guild. Um, 
yeah. We have a lot of really inactive members. But, like, Fish has told me not to, like, kick anybody out because, like, we're not at max capacity, so there's no real reason to. Um, and then... Now, the guild board is, like, the most useless thing ever. Because <laughs> it's basically, like, a little messaging board thing that literally nobody uses. That I could show you. Okay, so... Now, in case you're wondering, Giselle is like, it's an NPC in the game that lets you know when, like, certain things happen. So, the most active person on the guild board is Giselle. That, that should tell you a lot. <laughs> and then you have the guild exchange hall. Actually, I will come back to that. We'll start here, the guild research center. So, basically, this is something you want to be doing every day. Um, it doesn't really matter whichever one you do. I typically go to the experience boost because everybody wants to level up as quickly as possible. Basically, you spend your hard-earned Zell and Karma in order to help, you know, grow that EXP bar so that we can get better buffs. This goes a lot better when you have um, more than one person doing it every day. And then, um, you know, like the little bar down here show is like. Basically, you can't do more than that every day. So yeah, there's that. Okay. Yay, it happened. Occasionally, this will pop up and you can get, you know, you get more contribution or whatever, and you get more reward for it. Like, and now we shall go to the gold exchange hall so I can show you what that other, no, I clicked the guild board, no. Oh no. Now, another reason why I don't like the guild board is it takes forever to load. Like, it's really, really, really slow. Ugh. Anyway, now, guild exchange is all. Now, basically, what this is, is you can... Is this that... Is this a dude from the Vortex Arena? I didn't know he... Interesting. I didn't know these units were here. That's pretty neat. That's really neat. But anyway, um... You can use the the things you get from contributing to get goodies from here. They have a lot of really good goodies, but again, everything is expensive. Um, yeah, these are actually spe oh, I'm dumb. I didn't see that this said spear up here. I was about to explain to you how those are spears. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to get my um my Omni Plus going. <laughs> but anyway, um, you can spend your things to get stuff from here. Now these are materials like down here, and you use these to craft those some of the spears. Um, summer mystery chests. It's very, it's very, very self-explanatory. Very self-explanatory. I'm gonna go ahead and buy one. Cause why not? Um, go back. Now, since I just did that, might as well go over it. So where, where is that button? Is it in here? It's not in here. All right, it's in here. So mystery chest. You click this. I'm gonna open it, let's see what I get. Probably not anything good, but whatever. That's not bad. I got a burst number. Um what? Now the level up campaign, this is something you you definitely need to be taking advantage of it because you've leveled up like hundreds of levels. <laughs> so you definitely can um be taking advantage of this. Um so yeah. Pretty much every five levels you get something. So yeah, make sure you're going here and getting your stuff. And the Heaven's Edge, I really want this because this is the most broken spirit in existence. Uh, like it's so broken it doesn't even tell you how broken it is. It literally just says, gives you a bunch of effects. It, I think it says includes a myriad of abilities or something like that. Oh, come back. Come back. 
Okay, so you see how it says watch video for a free slot spin? That's something you can do. You watch an ad, and then they let you um, do one of the slot things for free. You can watch up to 10 videos a day. Um, and, yeah. I think that covers most of it. I guess I'll go over Grand Quest. Now, Grand Quest is basically a bunch of, um, quests that you do. <laughs> they're basically like, they're basically like raid story raid battle quests. Um, you get rewarded for completing them. Sometimes the rewards are really good. Sometimes they're, eh. And, I think that covers just about everything. So, yeah. Oh, I guess I should go over this real quick so friends list now you can actually favorite friends as well now in case you're wondering why I still have this um, person who hasn't been all online in 707 days is <laughs> because this is actually the first person I ever added in Brave Frontier now I remember me, Asmodai, and this guy Panda up here, who actually logged on fairly recently because he was also inactive for a really long time. But like, I think it was um Panda was number one on my arena friend ranking, and Asmodai was number two, and I was number three. I mean, Asmodai kept like swapping ranks because we were like really competitive. It was fun, but then he became really inactive, and I never saw him again. It was sad. But yeah, let me just go ahead and this also you can open this up to like look at their friend or friend leader leader friend whatever see their builds and all that jazz can I add him to my favorites also if somebody is in your favorites you have to remove them from your favorites in order to unfriend them so yeah this is um I think that's about it I guess I can go over this, maybe. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I guess I'll eventually make a tutorial for the Summoner's Home when you get to that point. Uh, oh wait, let's go to menu so I can go over this stuff. Player info. Um, you can actually edit what this says. So I have it, like, you know, let's say my Twitter. I should probably specify that as my Twitter. <laughs> there we go. Um, you can actually change your name to whatever. But I think it's like, um, there's some limitation on changing your name. You can't just like change your name willy nilly. And also, just like this shows like what um, people see when, um, when they pull up your friends list, I guess. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, links. This is all the official Brave Frontier media, their Facebook page, their Twitter, their Instagram, the wiki. I can't remember what this is. I think occasionally, sometimes the forum do like special events, and then like you get codes that you can put in. Um. Oh, there's a unit of choice at the end of this. I didn't know that. I right, make sure I keep logging in every day. I'm actually not sure how far I am. Um, blah. Oh, news. This is important. Important news. News that is important. Basically, this is basically this is how you keep up with everything and all the events that are happening and all that jazz, so you don't get caught off guard by all the crazy stuff. But yeah, that's. Did this already happen? What's what's today's date? It's August 9th. Okay, so this will be happening later on tonight, so keep in mind, Gold. There's going to be a maintenance tonight at 2200 hours. So, 14 hours from now. Um. Oh, adding a new battle. Let me see. I see Michelle. Ooh. 
Ooh, -hoo. it's reopening. So I get another chance to get Caliburn. So I'm just letting you know, if you have the gems to summon, summon, no, summon Arthur, if you can, because Arthur is broken. Like, he's broken in Frontier Hunter, so you want to get him and train him up as much as you can. Oh my gosh. So, half, half energy, double XP. Take advantage of this as much as you can, because you will level up a lot. Um... So August 16th to August 21st. I'm going to make a video when it actually comes out just to show you like what I'm doing. Um, raid battle events. I have never participated in any of those ever, so... Neat. Why did you show Michelle if like you didn't have anything to say? Like I thought she was getting like a quest or a spirit or... Wait a minute. I think Duo GX is getting an Omniform. I think Duel GX is getting an Omniform. Anyway, uh, that just about covers everything. I will edit some background music into this because this is... Ugh. So yeah.